it automatically. Ah, yes, we're live. Yay! It must be Monday at noon. Yes. And we're live with Cameron Monty. <laughs> Hi, guys. It's Farmer Staff from Farmer's Table Kids. I'm back here. Yes. He's going to answer all the soil questions you have. So shout out. Ask him. Ask the questions. Cameron, so we can make your plants happy. Absolutely. Okay. Cameron, today we are potting up the tomatoes and pepper seeds that we started like weeks ago. Oh, this is so cool. So we started doing Facebook Live at noon, what, like a month and a half, two yeah. months ago maybe? Yep. And one of the first things we planted together were tomatoes yeah, and I peppers. Like so this is what some of my tomatoes look like, along with some of my peppers. And you guys, you know it's time to pot them up, which means they're going to go into larger containers. It's time to pot up when you see the second set of true leaves. So Cameron, let me show you what that means. Sure. Um, so the first set of leaves that comes out of a seedling are the cotyledons. That's these little guys here. You can see they don't look like a tomato leaf. They always kind of look like that. Yep. So that's not a true leaf. This is the first set of true leaves. And this is a burgeoning set of second leaves. So now that we have our second leaves coming up, we can pot these babies up. Same with the peppers. The peppers are, their true leaves are here and their second leaves are budding. So we're gonna pot these into larger containers. Now these tomatoes and peppers are all going to go into a four inch pot. This four inch pot is a plastic pot I get at our local nurseries. I also reuse these year after year. If you reuse them, I do disinfect them with one part bleach to nine parts water. Um, we should also mention that you did a special blend. I did a special blend in this. So what I did is I took some Pro Mix that has perlite in it, and I dumped a big bag of Coast of Maine raised bed mix in it. Yep. I just love the Coast of Maine raised bed mix in it because it, it lightens it up, and it adds more vitamins and nutrients for the plants. I have not treated these plants with fish emulsion or anything like that yet. I will do a foliar spray, spray of fish emulsion once these are weak in their four inch pots. But for now, I'm really relying on the soil and coast of Maine nutrients to feed my plants. Excellent. So what I'm going to do is, you know me and my labels. Yeah, I know As you're doing you great see, with your labels. Thank you very much, Karen. If I could read, I'm then really I'd be able to. i yeah. I have actually labeled my tomatoes this year. So I am going to continue with that and make sure I know what I am planting. So let's do this blend here. This is the Sunrise Bumblebee Collection from Johnny's, and I love We these. love Johnny's. I love Johnny's. I love this Sunrise Bumblebee Collection. It is part of their Artisan Tomato series, and it's golden with orange stripes. It's absolutely beautiful. Chefs love use it, using it in like mozzarella salads because it's so pretty. Now, what I'm going to do is take the label and put the label in a pot. Each one of these pots is going to get its own label. But for the purpose of this video, I'll show you what I do. I just take a popsicle stick, really any stick, sometimes even a butter knife, and I just pop the seedlings right out. Now, guys, when we're transplanting anything, um, you don't want to hold the plant by the stem. There's only one stem and it's fragile. And if you break it, the plant's gonna have a super hard time rebounding from that. So always hold it by its leaf or by the roots. I prefer holding it by the leaf. If the leaf breaks, it's totally fine. It can grow back, not a problem. The other thing I wanna show you that's specific to tomatoes is all these little hairs on the tomato stem, that those will grow roots if you plant them into the soil. So the way to get nice thick root stems for tomatoes is to plant right up to the first leaf. And I know that that means I'm taking this nice kind of cute, mature looking tomato, and I'm potting it right up to the first leaf. See how the soil awesome. is touching that first yeah. leaf? It's going right like that. And I know that that then makes the tomato look a lot smaller than it initially was. But trust me, you guys, this is so much better for the tomato health. It'll encourage a strong root system, a much stronger stem, and it'll just be an all around healthier plant once you go out into your field with it. So go ahead and pot those up. I am not pressing the soil down, down hard around these plants at all. I'm creating a nice deep hole for me to get complete coverage on the stem. And I'm going right up to that first leaf, but I'm not pressing down. Now, Cameron, 
some people, like our friend Jared, who always turns tunes in for our Facebook Lives, <laughs> he mentioned that he was having some problems with his seedlings. And I don't know if he's on right now or not, but he did show me a video of his seedlings a while back. And they may be leggy. So if you have some tomato plants that look very, very tall and are kind of spindly, then that means that they um, kind of were reaching for the sun a lot. A lot of times tomatoes can kind of reach for the sun and you're like, oh look, they're growing nice and tall. You don't want them to be tall like that. Again, you can see how I'm completely burying my stems here. And that's going to encourage a strong, thick stem so that when these go outside, they're going to be able to withstand wind and temperature and also have strong stems to support all of the gorgeous fruit. Well, can't that's that happen with a, a little bit too much nitrogen in the soil too? Oh, can't yeah. Can't that cause that? That can, and that will also really affect your peppers. Yep. So your peppers, if they get too much nitrogen, they will be gorgeous, beautiful, full, bushy bushes oh. with no fruit. <laughs> That's so sad sometimes. Um, yeah, so you always want to know what your nitrogen levels are, especially with your peppers. Well, the other thing is when you're, when you're doing these starters mixes, in when you're using compost, compost is, it'll gently feed your plants. Exactly. So, and the plant will grab what it needs naturally. Okay, so this is my tray of Sunrise Bumblebees. Now, we're gonna switch over to peppers. Now, these peppers I planted in row trays. You might have them in six packs. However you have them, we are going to start potting them up. These are all Golden Cow Wonders, which I love. This year, I did a ton of Golden Cow Wonders and a ton of Lunchbox Peppers, which are my favorites. So you can see here, same thing. I'm just taking my popsicle stick or bread knife even a finger sometimes. And with the peppers, because there's not as much leaf coverage, I'm going to take this the little leaf and the peppers I'm just gonna put right in. You can see I am not planting the whole stem like I did with the tomatoes. It doesn't work for this. See how there are no furry hairs on the stem? That's not going to root the same way as a tomato will. So this, you just wanna put the whole root ball into the soil and get coverage. I always tell kids when I'm planting with them at the farm, think of this as a sponge. And if you leave this above air, it's going to soak up air instead of the nutrients from the soil. So anytime I'm farming with little kids, I like to tell, they always say, how deep do I plant it? Plant it deep enough to cover the soil and that's it. That way the stem can breathe, the pepper can breathe. We're just covering the little soil root here. Boop, like that. And now they're happy. And this will give them so much more space to grow and mature. I always find it so, like, so interesting. Once you plant these in their four inch pots or anytime you pot up a tomato or pepper, they really do take off so much faster. I think it's because you're at the stage where the second true leaves are coming. So it has a nice maturity to it. It's got, it's already starting to grow. And um, once you give them more space and more room, they just appreciate it and they take off that much faster. <laughs> so we're going to label these and then that's it. That's all you do, you guys. And then once you have your tray planted and everything's labeled, we are going to We're water gonna water. In. Yeah. Yes. We're gonna water in. So as you know, I'm a big fan of misting. I love yeah. the mist attachment here. <laughs> so I'm just gonna mist these guys in. You do want to make sure it's thoroughly watered um, with something like this. These tomatoes are so mature, the peppers are so mature. I want to make sure this water goes all the way through. So I'm just going to water the whole thing. And then I'm going to put it in a sunny spot. So this will join the other happy seedlings over in seed, seed, Seedling Alley. Should oh yeah, seedling, seedling alley? alley over there. Some it's magnificent. I wanted to show you. Tomatoes, as we know, come in all different shapes and sizes. This is a Brandywine tomato, okay? So this is heirloom. And I am so proud of how thick these stems are. I'm really proud of that. A lot of people might have tall, spindly seedlings. And if you do, you guys, now is the perfect opportunity to fix that. If your seedlings are really leggy and tall and starting to creep over, now's the perfect opportunity to take those tomatoes and bury your stems. I promise you, that's how you're gonna get a beautiful seedling with a nice thick stem that stands 
up beautiful and happy. Okay? So, any questions from our No questions. I'm, I'm surprised. I keep, we got a All good right. group of people watching, but awesome. nobody's asked any questions. All right. Yet. Well, if you guys have any questions, shout them out now. Happy tomato and pepper planting. These guys, um, they'll spend about another month in the greenhouse. Where are we? Uh, we're almost to May 1st. Yep. I don't plant these out until the first week of June. Why? Because we got a frost on June 5th last year. Yep. <laughs> so, I don't put my tomatoes and peppers out until the first week of June, which means they're going to sit in those four inch pots for a full month inside the greenhouse or inside your house in your sunny window, and they'll be ready to go outside first week of June. All right? Don't rush it. Don't rush your tomatoes. Don't rush your peppers. Don't put them out in the fields right now. <laughs> Hold on to them and have fun. Okay, Westview Farm yes. just said, what was the mix you showed? And you said yeah. it, you used Pro Mix and you used our Castine raised bed mix. That's right. It was um, a half mix part of, of it. Yeah, Pro Mix and a Castine raised bed And that'll, the, the Pro Mix will also drain nice. And then when you add in the Castine, it'll give it that biological diversity that the plant needs. Yeah. And then one of the other things that I want to do this year is use the Coast of Maine worm castings. Yep. to do the bubbler system to be able to make some nice we've got some nice system. videos on yeah. that mary Amazing. did some nice videos on exactly. that <laughs> so i want to use the worm castings too so anytime i do um fish emulsion or a worm casting yep. i will do a video on that to show you exactly how i do it but right now i'm just letting the seedlings take the nutrients from the soil excellent awesome great well, job for tuning in, guys. thank Bye. you up tomatoes and peppers Tune in to Coast of Maine and Farm for Table Kids for more farming information with families. That's it, guys. Happy farming!